Okay, so this has been sent to me by the nice people at Harley Benton. Don't have a knife, so I'm gonna try using a plectrum. Not too bad. So this is gonna be the most expensive Harley Benton that I've ever played, ever tried out. The most expensive one up until this point has been the Jazzmaster type, and that was unbelievable. So I've got high, high expectations for this guitar. Wow, what do you think about that? It's not the lightest guitar, I'd say it's a good mm, nine pounds possibly. And it's been quality inspected by 1608. The neck's a lot bigger than I was expecting. It's very, very chunky, actually. Not a bad thing at all, but just something to keep in mind that it is quite, it's a big neck. It's a very attractive neck. I don't know if you can see that in the camera. And that looks really well done. It's got the roller uh, string trees. That's pretty cool. A nice Wilkinson two-point tremolo was the Tram arm in the bag. So it's not in here. Not in here. Ah, it's been stuck to the side of the box. It's pretty good. They normally let them just rattle around loosely. Oh, so it's got the the spoke wheel. I'll show you what I mean. For the truss rod, the um, the spoke wheel at the bottom of the neck. So that's what this is for. This kind of little long metal tool it's for adjusting the truss rod. So we've got three different Allen keys and the tram arm. No sharp fret ends, it's not 100% perfect, but it's definitely nothing that you'd really complain about. The frets are far less polished than what I got on the, um, this one. This one, the frets were just, no grittiness, no friction or anything on that one. This one's got a little bit more, which I'm surprised about because this is probably about twice as expensive, maybe a bit more, so. But the, the actual quality of all the components in that is so much higher. The woods used, the stainless steel frets, we'll go over the specs in a minute, but the finish seems to be perfect. Really nice satin feeling neck. The rest of the body's gloss and the neck is satin. I think the face of it is gloss as well, but then the back of it is satin, so it's a really nice touch. What do you prefer? Do you prefer the glossy necks or do you prefer, uh, prefer the satin necks? I definitely prefer satin necks. I should rub down the necks on more of my guitars, actually. It's just so much nicer to me. It's definitely gonna stand out on stage. Out of tune, unacceptable. Going back, straight back to Simon. The action looks pretty good. We'll give that a little bit of a tweak anyway. Locking tuners, that's nice. This can come off, it's annoying. Goodbye. Right, so, first impressions. Neck is a lot more chunky than I was expecting, but it's a comfortable neck, it feels good. I was just expecting a smaller, like a maybe an Ibanez or a Schecter SLS kind of thing, but it's a good feeling neck. The finish looks perfect. Not really sure about the the um, finish of the the machine heads and the and the hardware. It's kind of like a satin silver. I think it makes it look a bit cheap. I think the the chrome might have looked better, even though this is possibly a possibly a more premium option. Feels like a no load tone circuit, but we'll find out in the specs, which we shall do now. Put my cheat sheet down in front of me. So the body itself is made from Nyota. Nyota. Naruto. I think it's a species of mahogany from the Philippines, Indonesia, that kind of area, but it's a, I think it's a type of mahogany. Might be wrong on that, but just Google that and you'll find out. So bolt on maple, roasted maple neck with a really nice flame in it, actually. So I, I hopefully I'll, I'll capture it on B-roll, but hopefully you'll be able to see it here as well. Yeah, that's really cool. Roasted maple fingerboard as well, fretboards, which is also, also has a nice flame on it. And, 
pretty sure that won't come out on, on this camera, but when I get the B-roll, hopefully you'll be able to see that. That's it just makes it seem so, so much more expensive than it is. Really nicely rounded over as well. Um, okay, so that's the fretboard and the neck. It's got the black dot inlays. So there's a modern C-shape neck profile, 25 and a half inch scale length, and a 12 inch radius, which is more of a Gibson style radius. Typically on a guitar like this, you, you might expect a 12 to 14 or or a 14 to 16 compound radius, but I think they've just decided to stick with a 12 inch all the way along the neck on this one. So it comes with this new bone nut, which is nice. It feels very good quality. I didn't know any better in terms of graph tech or something, but shows how much I know. Stainless steel frets, which is obviously the impressive part here for this price point, 300 and three, 350 pounds, I think. Stainless steel frets and a roasted maple neck and fretboard for 350 pounds and locking tuners, so that's unbelievable value. Even five years ago, so you, you'd never get this kind of spec for this sort of money, I don't think. So much guitar for the money. Three-way switch, switch between the pickups, a master volume and a master tone. Doesn't say if it's a no-load tone circuit, but it's definitely got that feel. The master is quite a bit tighter feeling than the tone, but it does kind of feel it locks into place at the top, like on a... Charvel or whatever else uses a no load tone circuit. So Wilkinson two point tremolo with this kind of satin. What are they calling it? They're calling it a nickel matte nickel hardware. Ah, uh, I don't know if I like matte nickel hardware. I kind of do. I just associate it with cheaper guitars. Maybe I don't even know if I've seen it on a cheaper guitar. Why do I associate it with cheaper guitars? You know what it is the Jackson PC3, uh, the cheaper model to the Jackson PC1, that came with this kind of hardware. So I think that's what it is in my brain. It's kind of making me think of the cheaper model. But yeah, I'm going to try and ignore that because does it really matter? We've got these single roller uh, string trees, which should hopefully help out the um, tuning stability quite a bit. It's nice to see. They're staggered as well, the, the actual locking tuners, which is nice. So that's going to help out as well. And obviously this kind of headstock, there's hardly any kind of break angle. So the strings are perfectly straight down. So even though it's not a locking tremolo or anything like that, I'm hoping that tuning stability should be pretty good on this guitar. It does, doesn't say, it just says factory strings 10 to 46. Might have to just change those for something decent. I like Ernie Ball. And yeah, so then it's just this sparkle finish, which is a gloss silver sparkle. The back of the guitar, is also a gloss finish, and then you can see the satin neck there. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh, the pickups, I don't know how I've managed to gloss over the pickups, but they are as well, I think PAF, Al Nico 5 style pickups. Don't know if they'll be any good. I haven't really heard anybody else's opinion, which is good, so I can make up my own mind without any other kind of influence, I suppose. So yeah, 350 pounds. Um, I didn't buy this, as I said, my friend at Harley Benton sent this to me. If I had bought this with my own money, I'd be really happy with this. I'm really, really happy with this, actually. Action's a bit high. I don't like the weight very much. It's not It's not too heavy. Maybe a pound lighter would have been nice, but it's all wood, so your one might be a pound lighter. So I think we should plug this in and hear how it sounds. I'm expecting good things. I'm expecting a lot from this guitar. I'm hoping these pickups are all right because that at this point, that could be the one limiting factor to this guitar. Everything else seems of such good quality that I don't think that stuff's gonna let it down. It's just the sound of the pickups. Do we like it? Do you like it? Let's find out. Okay, so I've just tuned it up, discovered that it's got a coil split. Um, we're gonna start off on a clean sound. This is the neck pickup, full humbucker mode. And this is with the coil split. Full uh, humbucker on the bridge position. And then coil split in the bridge. Mm -hmm. 
probably need to stretch the strings in a bit more, but. All right, let's hear how they sound. These pickups sound with a bit of crunch. This is with the Nobleman, which is an ODR1 clone. This is on the bridge pickup. Next pick up. I'm finding the pickups a little bit dark and a little bit with less output than I would usually like, but that's just a preference thing. You might like lower output pickups, which is not really my thing, but sounds good. Now we'll add a bit more gain. This is the bridge pickup. That's some more game with the neck pickup. So now I'll play some lead. This is the neck pickup. Lastly, some leads on the bridge pickup. And last of all, while we're still, last of all, while we're here, let's try it the tram and see how well that stands up to some dive bobbing. It's not too bad. It's not a lock in tremolo, so it's not a huge amount of movement with the arm. So you're not going to do really deep dives, but you probably don't want to because it's not a Floyd Rose lock in tremolo or anything like that. So yeah, I'm impressed with that. So I think that out of the box, it's okay. It's really, it's, it's not okay. It's really good. I was just blown away with the last Jazz Master that I tried. So it's hard to put this into perspective at the moment. I found the action out of the box of, with the Jazz Master was just there, it was perfect. That's a preference thing, it was set up to how I like it. This isn't, this needs to come down a little bit. The weight of it's fine. I think the sound of the pickups, they're okay if you like that kind of thing. If you like a lower output pickup, then you, you might love it. 
I don't like a low output pickup, medium output pickup really. Again, like I keep saying, it's a, it's a preference thing. So I would probably change the pickups I would still buy this guitar because I think you're getting so much guitar for the money. People refer to it as the bones of the guitar. I think the bones of the guitar in this case are brilliant. Locking tuners seem really good. I wouldn't change those to a more premium brand or anything like that. I think they've kept it in tuning really well. The ratio when I'm actually tuning the string is perfect. The tremolo is not something I'm used to, a vintage style tremolo like this, or be it a more modern vintage style tremolo, but I was actually impressed with the results. The nut is, kept, is cut really well. When I was tuning up, it wasn't binding in the nut or anything like that, the strings. The color is just so good. You're gonna stand out on any stage. I would have liked the back to not been gloss. I would have think it would have felt a bit more premium if they'd gone with a satin back like the satin neck and just kept the gloss front preference. You might not like that. The coil splits because the pickups, in my opinion, are quite low output anyway, drops quite dramatically in volume. So when you hear the actual pickup test, I'm not gonna boost the volume or anything. There's gonna be a noticeable drop in volume, but that's gonna be relative to what you would hear. It's really hard to react to this because I was expecting it to be good and it is good. It's, it's really good. Like other than the personal preferences, I wouldn't change anything on this guitar. I want to spend a bit of time getting to know this guitar, getting to know the sound of it, getting to know what kind of EQ works with it, that kind of thing, and getting a real feel of the guitar. And then once I have in a week or two, 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 two weeks maybe, I'll do a more in-depth video on this. We'll put it in a track. We'll hear how that sounds. We'll go through some more sounds. We'll go a bit more sort of intensive in the, the actual testing of the tones available with this guitar. Still not sure about these satin knobs and the satin tuners but I think they might grow on me we'll see if you're looking at Harley Benton guitars at the moment check out this video just here it's on their Jazzmaster model it's the guitar that's kind of ruined all budget guitars for me now because it's so good definitely worth checking out if you're looking at something in a more higher price point at the moment from what I know about this and what I've experienced go for one of these it's, it's so good I'll put all the links in the description below the links are now affiliate links so if you buy one of these guitars or or anything else from that link I get a little bit of money back so thanks so much for that that money goes straight back into the channel and we can keep checking out new and exciting gear. See you later.